What's up? This is Parker Jameson from the band Starkill. This is Brittany Slays from Unleash the Archers. Hey guys, this is Stu from Death Dealer. This is Charlotte from The Lane. Hey, this is Dan. And this is Brett from and Revocation. And thank you for listening to The Great Metal Debate. Metal Debate listeners, we have another special guest today, and one that really kind of needs no introduction to all the metalheads out there, but I'm going to do it anyway. Joining us is none other than Tim the Ripper Owens. Tim, welcome to the Great Metal Debate. Nice, man. But I do Listen, yeah. I do need an introduction to people. Uh, it's always better that way. <laughs> <laughs> we can make them guess, but I'll just go ahead and tell them your name. That'll work. <laughs> okay, there. <laughs> Alright, well it's very cool of you to join us. I mean, we're huge fans of the of the many different projects that you've been involved in. It. Um, well, I'll tell you what let's do first, Ripper. You, you've got so many bands and projects that you're part of. Why don't you just give us a real quick rundown of the bands that, uh, you know, throughout your career and then which ones you're currently active with? Well, you know, obviously, well, listen, if I get a list of all the bands in my career, we we would be here for days uh, going all the way back, you know. But, you know, with me being from Akron, Ohio, you know, starting off with all my local bands and, at the uh, and, and the whatnot and everybody, but you know the, the the thing that got me going nationally was a band called Winter's Bane, and then uh, you know we kind of moved on, and then and then obviously joining Judas Priest in 1996 was the uh, was my college to to the world of, of of music. You know, I mean, people go to four years of college, and I spent uh, seven or so years in Judas Priest to be my college, and and uh, you know went, went from Judas Priest uh, to uh, Ice Turf. Spent a couple years there, a couple studio records, a couple uh, uh, EPs and a live record and DVD, and uh-huh. you know, then uh, left there. Did a little bit of, did a little bit with, well, I did Beyond Fear, uh, my 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 band, and then I did a did a couple records with Ingve and just kind of had some fun with him, and you know, my, and then I did the solo record, uh, Play My Game, and uh, you know, the thing about about all those is, is they all had their own individuality, you know, and it was kind of cool to uh, to do it and loved it all. And, you know, the, the main thing with me now is I tour, I tour mainly solo. I go all over the world. I tour more now than ever, and I, and I, I will get a band from the country and, you know, we'll learn a great set of music and we'll tour. Uh, but then that being said, I've, I have Charred Walls of the Damned, which I did two CDs with, and we're working on a new one. Right now, I got to do the vocals, and that's got Richard Christie uh, from Ice Earth and Death, and from the Howard Stern Show. And then I have a band called Project Rock. The album is the CD is done. Album, I guess you still say album, but the, the yeah. music, everything recorded. That's got uh, Kerry Kelly and, and James Kotek and Ruben Sarzo and and uh, Teddy Zigzag on keyboards, and that's that's pretty cool. That's really cool stuff. A little bit different for me. That'll come out this year. Um, you know, and I, you know, then I'll do. Like I said, I'll do a couple shows here and there. I just did that Black Knight's Rising, and that was just a last minute. Can you you want to come out and sing a couple songs? Shows, and I did. And so, so you know, the thing is, listen, I get asked nonstop to to tour and come jam, and people ask people ask me, hey, why do you why do you tour? Why don't you st- stick to one band? And I'm like, well, then I would have to have a a sixty hour a week job, <laughs> you know? Cause, yeah, because that. That just doesn't that doesn't work. I mean, people don't buy music like they did. First of all, yeah, that's right. If I did Beyond Fear only, uh, it would cost me money to make it and tour. So it's the demand for me is to tour solo and to use my name and my voice. So I kind of do it. You know? I just caught the Black Knights Rising show in, in in Newport, and it was freaking awesome, man. I loved it. Yeah, you know that was great because that was my first show with them, uh, and I never sang. You know those songs, and people said after that, you know, man, I thought you might do some priests. The thing was, it wasn't my my show. Uh, I was just coming into them, and they were trying to stick with obviously the rainbow and and the deep purple and and stuff. But if if I do that again in the future, which we had we had so much fun with it that we're talking about putting some more shows together, we would probably definitely add a couple priest tunes, or you know, uh, I think maybe even a Beyond Fear song or something, you know. 
Oh, that'd be excellent. Well, was, it, man, when you when you ask, uh, if you listen to Fools, the Mob Rules, I tell you, man, that was one of the best live songs I've seen. You did an excellent job with that. Thank you. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I love singing Ronnie. He, singing singing uh, Ronnie by the end of a few shows and by the end of the tour, he, he really tears me, my voice down, man. He's a, he's a hard singer uh, to sing, and uh, that's the one singer that, Man, he just beats me down vocally. Well, you did a great job. Let me let me take you, you back a little bit, Ripper. Um, did did you have a, a heavy metal epiphany kind of when you're growing up? You know, you you heard a particular song or band or concert, and then that it was that point you recognized you're like, this is what I want to do for a living. This is what I, I want to make and sing this music. You know, I I don't think I really ever. I don't know if I ever really had one of those. Yeah. It, it, the, the strangest thing is, is I always sang and I loved to sing and kind of started doing it, but I never thought that that I was going to be a, um, you know, do this for an actual living. Yeah. You know, that yeah. that's the funniest thing is I didn't, I had a job, I had real jobs and, you know, had a, 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 an apartment or a house and uh, um, had a car and a car payment and you know I did the whole thing so um, so I wasn't that I, I always did it but I never I never thought that I just always wanted to go on stage and do really good at it <laughs> that's what I always told people was priest when you rec- realized you know that you that you could do it and make money and make a living at it or was it before then um oh it was priest yeah when I made priest that I gotta be honest. I, I mean, I made it with with Priest, but when I left Priest and I left I Stir, there was a, a moment I started to think, "Well, what am I gonna do?" Mm. You know, because there's not many people that. I mean, even being just a singer living in Akron, Ohio, that is gonna make a living just being a singer. And uh, and you know what? I I I realized when I got some calls to go make some appearances and fly to Brazil and sing a, a set of music with a band and yeah. you know I was like hey wait a minute here you know the floodgates opened up but I you know Priest really that obviously really was the point where I realized man this is going to be this is uh, you know this is going to be my job you know that's what I thought, thought it was going to be well now let me ask you this you know um, above and beyond you know just vocalist you know how would you describe your role in the band and and, and like you actually touched on this, you know, is your role different when you go into a super group, you know, where you've got guys like you who've already, you know, been part of great bands, or, or do you find you're pretty much the, you know, it's the same role for you in each band? Well, I mean, it's a little bit different now, isn't it? You know, I mean, uh, you go in these super groups, you know, all these bands I do, I'm always pretty honored to, to be doing it still. I'm still a fan of it, you know? So, um, but I roll my my goal when I roll into those bands is just to I want to blow them away singing even even though they know it might you know like when I did this I wanted Elliot Rubinson to just go holy crap you know this guy and, and I mean Craig kn- knew it and Craig would tell him and you know it's just kind of that's you know I still do that's still the thing for me you know I just roll in and I want to sing good my 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 goal still is every time I'm around somebody on stage is to blow people away well you know you said you're 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 coming out with the new chart and uh I'd heard mention of another beyond fear album even you know do you like to write and contribute or you know how does that work absolutely I mean the beyond fear records actually written and I've recorded about five five songs or so vocals too but you know it's just hard because you know, we're not signed to a label, and, and most labels nowadays want to hear the hear it, get the product finished and hear it. You know, it just takes a lot of time and and money. Um, you know, you you wonder at the end of the day, I release this, will it be exactly I, what I'm having my problem with with Beyond Fear? Am I going to just put a Beyond Fear record out because people want to hear it? Or am I going to spend the right time and have and do it right and make sure it's the r- record I want to put out, you know, not just put it out? I'm kind of stuck. I'll go down and do some vocals to to the song we wrote and 
at the end of the day, a couple of them, I'm just not happy with what I've, I've done. And it's just hard, you know. I mean, the 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 Project Rock, Kerry Kelly was like, man, let's write this. So he started writing it and sending it to me. And, you know, he got the balls ro- the ball rolling. I go downstairs in the studio and I record it. And then I flew out to L.A. and, re- and record the vocals. And, you know, we really... We really did it right, and the charred walls is, you know, uh, the same way. But, you know, it's hard to, I mean, I really want to put a new Beyond Fear record out, but, you know, there's a lot of other, it's it's like this. You, you make money at a job, and then something that you love to do, do you want to, do you want to not work half the time and make you know, way less money or pay somebody to go do what you want to do. So then at the end of the year, I mean, right, it's right. almost, that's almost a situation of beyond fear. Uh, listen, I, I love the guys in the band. I mean, I was John Capri and myself are, are like brothers and, um, you know, I would do anything, uh, musically with him, but it's hard even for him because now he's going to have to leave his job. If you go do a tour, uh, it's just hard, you know. I mean, it's it's a weird situation. I don't think people understand it, that it's different nowadays. Uh, you know, they used to give you fifty thousand dollars to go make a record or something, you know, and uh, and then you could you could spend some of that, and then it could over then it could be part of your income. You could pay the band. You could have you know twenty thousand left over and and, right. and uh, pay some bills. Well, now you don't. So everything you you do is uh, it just everything's changed, and that's that's the one band that I'm having a hard time nailing my my songs, and uh, financially I'm just you know it's got to be right, you know. Absolutely, yeah. I mean, you want you want quality, and you want to be able to get paid for it, and you as well you should, you know. Um, let me look. You know, what's been the biggest difference as far as a band transition goes? What is there one that was more drastic to kind of come into than the others? Well, probably Ingve, um, because Ingve was a totally different kind of music for me. Uh, you know, it was a different crowd. Um, it wasn't a, you know, it was, uh, you know, it's, the band's called Ingve Malmsteen, right? I mean, it's, it's his band. So it was a little bit different where, you know, uh, they wouldn't let anybody put my name up on that I was appearing, you know, on the sign or on the advertisements, and which, which is, I'm not saying I disagree with that. It's, I just had to get used to that, you know. I mean, um, I didn't do any interviews or anything like that. So I think that was. I think I might have embraced that whole part of it, not getting in, in doing interviews. But I think whether it was just the whole change of it's a different type of music and stuff, but I really enjoyed it. And uh, I really enjoyed, you know, uh, working with him. You know, I actually had a great time. Well, let me ask you this. This is one of my questions. Was it as intense working with him as it seems like it would be? I mean, he's an intense guy. He is an intense guy, but i got to say I had, a, I had a really good time. In the studio, uh, he's, he's got a really good sense of humor. Uh-huh. Um, or at least he tries to have a really good <laughs> sense of humor. Yeah. Uh, he loves to, to just tell jokes, and, and uh, he actually was very easy to work with for me in the studio. We went in the studio, and he said, here's this is the idea I have, and I'd sing it and and uh, one one or two times, and then I'd say, hey, you know, uh, let me do it again. And he'd be like, man, no, you nailed it that, that time. It's great. He said, no, let me do it one more time, because now I'm telling you, <laughs> that was a good one. So, you know, it was, we had, you know, he took a lot of breaks. Um, sometimes I'd be in the middle singer, I'd look out and he's and he's he wasn't there anymore. <laughs> but you know what? I'll tell you, we he, he was a very very easy to work with, really. I mean I um to me. Now I, I can't talk for anybody else obviously, but he was uh had a good time. And he loves to play guitar, man. He loves to play. He he has a guitar in his hands all the time playing blues or something. He's always playing. Yeah, if he keeps practicing, he might be good at it. That's uh... he's gonna get it one of these days, isn't he? <laughs> he is, man. Well, listen, now you've been part of three legendary metal bands, uh, you know, Priest and Iced Earth and Ning Bay. Um, why, why do you think those bands have been so beloved by fans for so many years? I mean, 
their careers span quite a quite a few years. Yeah, well, I, I think obviously Inve, uh changed the face of guitar playing. I mean, the guy is, uh, you know, you, you, I've always said you, you talk about guitar players, you know, Dimebag or uh, Hendrix or, you know, the Eddie Van Halen or whoever, the Randy Rhodes, people that you hear them and they've, they've changed guitar playing, they have their sound. Yngwie totally changed the face of guitar players. I mean, it was, there's no doubt about it. Um, and obviously with, with Ice to Earth, I mean, they're, they're a, a, a power metal, traditional metal, power metal kind of band. That has that has a European kind of sound to them. That's from America. I mean, I, I don't know how many people try to argue with me that Ice Thirst from Europe. I'm like, listen, <laughs> they're from. As a matter of fact, he's from Indiana. But um, you know, I I uh, I think you know, in in they had a driven force with him. You always have to have someone driven. And, and John Schaefer is a very driven individual who who wants it his way or no, or, or the highway. And that's that's. It's a bad thing for some people, and, and obviously it's a great thing because, uh, I mean, it, a lot of band chain member changes, but he molded something that uh, that was true to, to the music and true to it, so I think that's it. And with Judas Priest, I mean, we're talking about, you know, coming up, you know, the, the two guitars and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, the, the one of the best vocalists of all times, and, the you know, they're stuck to the guns. And, and the big thing about Priest... That, that's different and some people was you know every record was different every album they put out was different except maybe Scream of Vengeance and Defenders of the Faith I mean they've always changed whether you liked it or not they've always changed and there's just something about them that keeps going and you know I mean uh, you look at that band and it's, it's you, I mean I know uh, Ken I know KK's not there anymore but you look and you go listen there's there's those guys you know I mean three guys that's what was weird about me Coming in there, that's what made it so hard. Is is that's, you know, some people would say Judas Priest, and they they probably thought Rob Hoffer's name was Judas Priest. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, but those that those you know it's, I don't know what makes it lucky breaks here and there. What happens, um, you know, people just making it through the hard times and they continue on because, obviously, we all know local musicians and local bands that are just fantastic. Uh, that just never quite make it or, or whatever, but, you know, I think it's just luck. You know, there's plenty of singers out there that's obviously better than me, but there's, you know, showing their talents at the karaoke thing. and Right, right. You know, it's just one, that's why I tell people, man, it takes one time, it takes one person to see you. <laughs> but, you know, listen, Priest and, and those, you know, I'm lucky to, to be in, to, to have been with these bands and, right. uh, you know, they, they'll, they did it themselves, man. That's I think that's probably why they're still around. They're all hard workers and uh, and did it. Well, I mean, you were an excellent part of all those bands too. I mean, you know, don't sell yourself short there. You know, you stood alone with uh, with all those guys, so that was great. Um, well, uh, thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, what's and this is kind of a hard question to answer for some folks. I mean, what, what's one thing fans old and new kind of need to know about Ripper Owens? Um. You know, what would you like him to do? Well, I don't know. I'm just uh, that um, I'm a lot better looking in person. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, well, I'm just, <laughs> That's perfect. <laughs> hey, I'm not quite as <laughs> my hair. It's not really falling out like it has in the photos. Um, you know, I think just uh, you know, I think the main thing is that when I do go on stage, I think I, I, it's the best part of the gig, and I I try really hard to to do a good job for everybody every night. I mean, I want, I want that, but I'm also just a, I'm a Tim Owens from Akron, Ohio, you know, um, got kids and family and, and, uh, got the restaurant and I hang, you know, if I'm ever in, in my hometown, I'm, you know, I'm still, a, I still hang out with the same friends that I hung out with when I was a kid. I, I tell you what, let's talk about Akron. Now you, you own uh, Ripper's Rock House in Akron, Ohio. Tell us kind of how that enterprise came about. Well, I originally um, had uh, Ripper Owens Tap House, and, uh, you know, I just kind of, uh, I had a guy ask me if I wanted to, to do it, and I did, and uh, then, then it, it, we changed the sold, and I, about a year and a half ago, I opened up a Ripper's Rock House, uh -huh. 
much better place in Akron and uh, great bands playing there and the food is fantastic which I just was, took my kids there for lunch today and uh, I don't go there that often I'm going to try to start going there more um, but it's it's a great place and we have John 5 coming up there and we have uh, we have the, the band The Foundry coming in there with uh, which is next Tuesday people can even make this road trip hey I know it's a, a long ways but um, it's uh, it's on a Tuesday night. It's eight thirty, so you guys can get home by about three in the morning. Excellent. Um, <laughs> uh, listen, that, that's what's great. You can tell a musician. I have the Foundry, which has AJ Pirro on drums. Uh huh. Uh, we have to see. We have AJ Pirro on drums. We have uh, John Moyer, Disturbed on bass. We have uh, Blaze Bailey singing, and uh, they're coming through. And my tickets I'm selling for the show are seven dollars. Oh, that's great price. And it's it's a Tuesday night, and I'm putting the band on at 8:30 with no openers. Yeah. So people can come in, watch them, meet them, and get out of there, uh, and still be home for work, you know. But it's great. It's a great club. It's like I said, the food's great. We've got this thing called the World Tour of Wings, and it's got 37 flavors of wings, and that almost all of them are wing flavors I've gotten from around the world. The hottest one is called Screen Machine, and um, it's a great place, you know. People make road trips uh, up from up your way. People yeah. all the time come for shows. I mean, John Oliva or, you know, whatever it's been, they, they make, on the weekends, they make the, sh the drive. You know? Right, yeah. Well, I tell you, some of the daily drinking food specials you guys have make, might make the move worthwhile up there. I mean, that's not, uh, that's no BS, well, man. You guys have some good stuff know, going on. It's pretty cheap and pretty good. And the funniest thing is, is um, you know, we don't make any money off those specials. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, people, I tell you, it's a whole different generation. You know, and people think that that's what prices are supposed to be like, especially around here. And and uh, you know, but we have good quality food and good stuff. And uh, you know, we're trying to make it. We're trying. We'll be open by a year and a half now. But it's a great place. It's got got some great memorabilia. It's got my first Judas Priest jacket that the Ripper's on the sleeve that I had made. That's hanging. and It's got a Glenn and KK guitars hanging. Um, actually, uh, KK's guitar is the Flying V, the first one he ever got made into a, a synth guitar recorded turbo with. That's hanging. It's got all kinds of good stuff. Excellent. Well, you guys, you know, listeners have to go up there and check that out. Stop in and say hey. Akron, Ohio, baby. <laughs> well, I've got a little thing I call the lightning round here, uh, Ripper. It's just kind of a hodgepodge of short answer, one word, or one sentence answer questions. Okay. Uh, listen, you got any hobbies? Uh, not too many. I'm always recording music. I, I try to, I, I'll try to golf. I'll probably I'll golf about four times a year. Okay. Okay. What about ghosts? You believe in ghosts? Uh, I I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Okay. What, what's the largest crowd you ever played to? Uh, 100,000. Wow. Where was that at? Ripper's Rock House. I was actually... No, I'm kidding. It was... Uh, <laughs> it's a big place. I think it was probably Greece. Cool. What's one word that you would use to describe yourself, Ripper? Normal. Normal. Excellent. Now, you can't say yourself, but who's your favorite vocalist? Uh, Ronnie Dio. Nice. And are you a sports fan? And if so, who's your team? Uh, Ohio State Buckeyes, Cleveland Browns, Cleveland Indians, Cleveland Cavs, Akron Zips. I'm a Ohio State fan because it's in Ohio State, obviously. And then uh, all local yeah. Cleveland and, and Akron. So you're a hometown, home state fan. I don't, That's I don't jump on the bandwagons. <laughs> All right, and then finally, kind of what what's in the immediate future for Tim Ripper Owens? Uh, what, what do you what what can we expect from you in the near future? Well, uh, I'll tell you, uh, Project Rock might be the next CD that comes out. I'll be doing the Metal All Stars tour in Europe um, in April May. Uh, a couple of weeks, I'll be going down and seeing Nico McBrain, uh, hanging out with him at a charity event. Uh, uh, for home safe and uh, raising some money and so uh, you know charred walls of the damned and this that and the other and who knows excellent we'll be looking forward to all of it and where can fans get Ripper music and merchandise 
But I don't have the. Mer- I took the merchandise thing off the line right now. But you know, best place to really to still get music is probably Amazon and iTunes and and uh, you know, I mean, if anybody wants the hard copies. Amazon.com is still a great place to buy records. I, people always tell me, I don't know, wh- where do you get them? Well, Best Buy still sells, obviously, in the, re- in the mom and pop record stores. But if somebody, it might be hard to get my solo record or, or uh, whatever. So Best probably would be to find an online store. And, uh, you know, Amazon, I always think, is good. I, I buy a lot of my stuff on iTunes, actually, because I just, I just, I buy stuff all there nonstop. I probably shouldn't, but I always just buy it. I can't find my rec- I can't find my album, my CD, so I just keep buying it all the time. Well, there you go. All right. Um, well, Tim Ripper Owens, thanks so much for joining us on the Great Metal Debate. You got it, buddy. Uh, anytime, give me a shout, and I'll do it again. All right. And thank you, listeners, for tuning in and keep those metal opinions and ideas coming to the Great Metal Debate.